It seems like no matter where you go in this world, every region, every culture has their own version of dumplings. And it makes so much sense. Everybody loves little handy packages of flavor, right? So when I traveled to South America last year, I was absolutely delighted to discover the Bolivian Salteña. The classic version comes with beef or chicken and it's also filled with a soupy gravy-like thing, so it kind of seems like a distant cousin of the Chinese soup dumpling. I say we give this a go. My name is Andung and this is the Bolivian Salteña or let's just call it the Andean Soup Dumpling. Just real quick before we get started, if you like learning about and recreating mouthwatering dishes from all over the world, like Bolivia, then you have come to the right place. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button for more delicious food inspiration. But back to our salteña. You might have noticed it looks a little bit like an empanada, but don't you ever say that in front of a Bolivian person. In fact, there's a pretty big difference between the two. I mean, not only does the salteña come with a soupy gravy filling, but it's also baked rather than deep fried, which makes it a slightly lighter option, which I kind of appreciate. So for today's filling, I'm gonna go with chicken, which is my favorite kind of salteña, but you're free to play around with anything you like. Beef is also a really, really popular option. All I have to do is drop some skinless chicken breast in a pot of water and bring it to a boil. Once boiling, some foamy stuff will appear and I'm just gonna skim that right off. Now turn your heat to medium-low and let your chicken simmer for around 15 minutes. Mmm, that looks really plain actually, but don't worry, we'll get there. Oh, and definitely, definitely keep that, um, I mean, can't call it stock, I guess, but let's just say chicken water. I mean, much more flavor in there than you think. While the chicken is cooling down, we can prep our veg. By the way, look at this massive onion. I've never seen anything like it. So you want to finely dice that onion, as well as some carrot and potato. This is the veggie base for our stew. So now that the chicken has cooled down, it's time to shred it. For that you want to take two forks and just carefully, carefully, ah screw it, just shred your chicken until it looks a little something like this. Now we're pretty much good to go to make the stew that will be the filling of our salteñas. First in a heavy pot I'm gonna heat up some oil and then here I have some cumin, oregano and paprika. So a very basic Latin American spice mix. I'm gonna let those spices infuse for just a few seconds and then the next ingredient, well, it's a little bit special. It's ají pepper paste. I got this homemade jar from a friend's Peruvian mom, but if you have trouble finding ají pepper paste, don't worry about it. I suggest you just go in with some diced yellow bell pepper and maybe a dash of hot sauce. I got lucky though, so I am adding my ají pepper paste to the spice mix and then also adding in my diced veggies and giving everything a really good stir. Next, you're gonna squeeze in some lime juice and you know what? Throw in the whole thing. The zest has a lot of flavor too. Go in with some butter for more richness, then salt, pepper, another stir, and now we can return our um, chicken water. And of course the chicken itself. Now simmer for just a few minutes and then turn off the heat. So guys, I think it is time to address the llama in the room. How the hell are we supposed to get a stew inside a dumpling? Well, you know what? This is where the salteña and the Chinese soup dumpling actually share some DNA. Do you see this globby thing here? That's some gelatin that I soaked in water for just a few minutes. I'm gonna stir this into my stew while it's still nice and warm. So gelatin will, well, gelatinize once it's cooled down and that is gonna allow us to handle the filling once we're building our dumplings. Same technique as in China, by the way. Now is also a great time to add in some green peas and of course some fresh cilantro or parsley. So if I had added these two before when the soup was still boiling, they would have lost that fresh green color and some of those more floral notes. So I'm definitely gonna add them in once the soup is not blistering hot anymore. Next you wanna transfer your stew into a casserole pan so it can cool faster. And I'd love to tell you that this is not gonna take long, but unfortunately it's gonna take like at least two hours in the fridge until this sets completely. But we will use this time wisely and make two crucial things. One is the dough for the Saitania wrappers, and the other thing is a sort of Andean inspired green salsa that will go perfectly with our Saitanias. So for the dough, begin by melting some butter in hot water. This will take a few minutes and in the meantime we're gonna mix flour, salt, sugar, an egg and some paprika for color and now add your melted butter mixture and combine everything. 
You might want to add some more flour until your dough is nice and soft, but you're still able to work it without it sticking to your hands too much. Now you want to cover your dough and let it rest for at least 15 minutes, which shouldn't be a problem at all, since we still have plenty of time until our stew sets completely. And as for the salsa, well it couldn't get much easier. Get a fancy green tomato like this, or any other tomato for that matter, and a green chili, then some fresh cilantro, and I'm using some Inca Muña, which is a minty Andean herb, but you can sub that for fresh mint, oregano, or just skip it. Now get everything in a food processor with some salt, sugar, and a good squeeze of lime juice and blitz for just about half a minute. Try to be gentle, because the food processors, they tend to froth up the tomato, which is not ideal, but also not a big deal. This is what your Andean salsa will look like. So packed with freshness, I love it. So at this point, my filling still hasn't cooled down completely, but I would like to use this opportunity to just show you guys how awesome Bolivia can be, and then right after, we will move to assembling our dumplings. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you guys, that was cool, wasn't it? So, unfortunately I can't get you to Bolivia right now, but I sure can help you get Bolivia into your kitchen. So our filling has set completely and you can really see how nicely it has gelatinized. So here's what we're gonna do. Divide your dough into little balls. Around the size of a ping pong ball seems good to me. Now roll out your dough until you have a disc about the size of your hand and they shouldn't be too thin, I'd say about the thickness of like two credit cards stacked on top of each other. Don't forget to keep the other dough balls covered while you're working with one. And then next you want to get a good tablespoon of filling in there as well as some sliced hard boiled egg and some olive. That's a really really classic salteña finish. Now seal your salteña really really well and leave a generous edge. This will help you pleat the rim into the signature salteña shape. Which, by the way, takes a little bit of practice and I'm not great at it, I admit. But watch, this is what you want to do. You want to fold and then pinch. Now take the new little flap here and then again fold and pinch and then keep working along the entire edge. So let's do that again. Fold and pinch and then fold and pinch. Okay now adding more of the stew will be delicious but it's also going to be a little bit harder to handle. So I suggest you start off on the drier side and then kind of work your way up once you get more comfortable with the salteña technique. And now when you're done you can slightly straighten up the edge and then lastly place your salteñas on a lined baking sheet and then brush with some egg wash just for shine. And the rest is easy. Place them in a preheated 250 Celsius or 475 Fahrenheit oven and then bake for around 15 minutes. <sighs> Approaching the magic moment. This is what fresh out of the oven salteñas will look like. The smell is a beautiful mix of a pastry shop and a chicken taco or something. And then once you open them up, you will be greeted by some of that delicious gravy-like stew inside and an incredible aroma that will just knock your socks off. The crust is flaky and buttery and the filling is just, well, it's comfort in a dumpling. Don't forget to add a little bit of your fresh green salsa and then enjoy your delicious homemade salteña. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this recipe straight out of Bolivia. Make sure to head over to my channel for more food inspiration from all over the world. How about cooking some super comforting Uzbek food, for example? That will be right here. Let me know if you have any feedback or requests or ideas for me and I will see you guys in the next video. Shhh! <laughs>